Okay, so in this video, where you're going to be um, splitting up this our webpack.config.js into two separate configs. We're going to be uh, splitting it into a development config and a production config. And so the reason for doing this is this way you can set up Webpack to utilize different um, options, um, environment variables. You can have it set up to use different plugins and loaders and whatever other um, things you need Webpack to do for those specific environments. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this our uh, config and I'm just going to call this webpack.prod.js and then I'm going to rename our webpack config to webpack.dev.js and so what we need to do now is update our scripts in our package.json to take advantage of these uh, new config files. So for build, we're going to do uh, webpack. We're going to pass in a config flag and we're going to tell it to use the webpack.prod.js. And then for the webpack dev server, we're going to pass in the config flag and tell it to use webpack.dev.js. Uh, another thing too I like to do is for the build I like to specifically set the node environment equal to production and you'll see why in just a second I use that for post CSS uh, it's not necessary to do this for webpack but I'm going to do this specifically for um, our post CSS config which you'll see a little in a little bit so we go back here to our webpack um, .dev .js. We can now go through this file and think, okay, what what does this config need to be exclusively for development? So the first thing is we no longer need this CSS extract plugin because we're only extracting the CSS when we do a production build. So we can delete uh, this entirely and we can delete this plugin. Cool. Uh, another thing we want to do is because now that we have um, a config specifically for development is we want to set up source maps and so source maps if you're not familiar will allow you to um, helps with debugging so if you have multiple JavaScript files and there's an error in one of those files when you look into the console it'll spit out and tell you exactly what file it's coming from um, and we're going to set that up for both our JavaScript and for our SCSS. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is under entry, we're going to enter in a new key called DevTool. And it's called inline source map. This will enable source maps for our JavaScript. And then in order to enable um, source maps for our styles, is we're going to convert these strings into objects. this way we can pass in a specific option so let me go options that takes an object as well source map true I'm just gonna duplicate this just makes it a little easier cool so let's run our dev server Make sure everything works. Yep, so everything's working. Hot module reloading is working. That's good. We didn't break anything. Save that. Come back here. Now let's go to our production config. And let's see what we're going to need in here. Uh, let's see, we can get rid of the hot module reloading here. We don't need that for production. And I believe that's all for this one. So we're going to keep the mini CSS extract plugin for production because you wanted to spit out that CSS file. Oh, also important, we're going to change the mode here to production. So Webpack knows that this is a production build. And then another thing I want to do is inside of our post CSS. You remember earlier when we were first setting this up, I um, 
included a plugin called CSS Nano that minifies and compresses our CSS. Um, but then I removed it just for demonstration purposes so we could see the actual CSS output and it wouldn't be minified. Um, so what I want to do is I want to only use CSS Nano in the production builds, but not in the development builds. And so that's why I set up my node environment equals production, because I'm going to set up a conditional like this. So if we do simple if statement, so process.env.nodeenv is equal to production. Copy this. Uh, let's cut it actually. And let's put in our CSS Nano. CSS Nano. Copy this again. Else. So else being we're not in production, so development, don't use it. So if we're in production, use CSS Nano, and then this way you can specify whatever post CSS plugins you only want specifically for production builds. And then otherwise, um, when we're in development, only use these. So you could technically, because you're most likely using a modern browser, uh, you could probably get rid of auto prefixer in development mode if you really wanted to, but since we're not writing to the file, it's just keeping it in memory, and it doesn't really cost us. I'm just going to leave that as is. Uh, so that wraps it up for this video. So again, what we did is we set up two different configs, one specifically for uh, development and one for production. And then in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a third config because if you notice, there's quite a lot of duplication and repetition between these two files. So in our third uh, config, we're going to have all the options that Webpack needs that both development and the production configs use. So this way it keeps all your configs dry, the DRY don't repeat yourself principle, and then that way there's only one place um, in order for you to update and make changes so you don't have to duplicate it and repeat yourself in multiple files.